On our interview segment, we caught up with the Director of Programs, Corporate Accountability and Public Participation Africa, Philip Jaguo. He spoke to us on a number of issues, including how the environment sector fared in 2021 and what the governments and leaders of countries around the world should do to ensure that some of the challenges posed by climate change are addressed in a greener way. All right, our guest on the show today is the Director of Programs with the Corporate Accountability and Public Participation Africa, CAPA. We will be reviewing the environment sector in 2021 and expectations for 2022. Philip Japo, Director of Programs, CAPA, welcome to Environment Today. All right. Thank you for having me. All right, so quickly, in an era or in a year where there were so many anomalies with the environment, particularly the COVID-19 pandemic, which devastated many countries, were there issues of the environment that stood out for you in the year 2021? Uh, look at an appraisal of that year, what went wrong, what went all right, and what needs to be corrected in the coming year? Okay, I um, first of all want to mention um, that um, 2021 was a year of uh, mixed blessings. Um, mixed blessings in the sense that uh, some of the issues we had in previous years still continued. Then um, such issues uh, like uh, oil pollution, especially in the Niger Delta, um, these issues continued. And then at the policy level, there were some uh, progress um for instance with the signing of the petroleum industry uh, uh, bill uh, uh, act into law um the climate change act which the president also signed those were very very positive uh, uh, developments uh, but like i mentioned earlier uh, on the environment front uh, especially in relation to um issues of uh, oil spills, especially in the Niger Delta, um, I think Nigeria did not make tangible progress. Uh, we are all witnesses to what happened in Nembe with the ITO spill, which uh, started, I think, November 1st and was not uh, put out until around December 8th. Uh, uh, the, the spill itself was not put out until there was massive outcry on the part of Nigerians, especially people in the in that region, uh, massive hydrocarbon spills into the environment. Um, this continued to happen until, like I mentioned, uh, Nigerians started crying out, fishermen, fisher for civil society people started crying out. But, um, and then of course, gas flooding still continued in the Niger Delta, still happened. Um, the suit that we used to, we used, we used to uh, witness in Port Harcourt has extended to Bielsa. So um, pollution in the region is still growing massively and uh, climate change has ended up worsening uh, the impacts of this uh, crisis. Because like I said, uh, now you see uh, dead fish leaving the shorelines of the Niger Delta. It's affecting agriculture, it's affecting fish cash, it's also affecting the um, life expectancy of the people in the region. So um, that is a serious thing. All right, Philip, I, I know you were in Glasgow for the Climate Change Summit, that's the COP26 summit, uh, which happened in, in November. And I'm going to ask you this because we saw a pushback, for instance, on fossil fuel at the global level for the first time after four years of inaction in the United States. Uh, we saw United States launch a comeback to the negotiation table. Uh, does that make any impact at all with the negotiations there? And what level or how would you describe the level of commitment of the, uh, at, the global, at the Glasgow conference in terms of protecting developing countries from climate change impact and also supporting their transition to newer and greener energy? Well, I want to shock you by uh, mentioning that um, Glasgow was a disappointment. Uh, and the comeback of America into the climate space um, was more of just a showbiz. 
And if you recall, in the first week of the COP in Glasgow, we had uh, a lot of uh, eminent personalities, former presidents, uh, uh, Biden was there, Obama was there, the UK prime minister, they were all you know, making very, very glowing speeches. But um, uh, even the talks proper, the kind of conversations that we expected them to do in terms of making funds available to address uh, climate concerns, especially the impact that uh, of climate change that is felt in Africa, which surprisingly and shockingly does not contribute even up to five percent of the of the cost of the climate crisis, it was very very disappointing because uh, the big nations uh, continued to play around the issue of funding and then uh, what dominated the talks was net zero and uh, net zero is an industry acquired language i continue to use that uh, ideally net zero will be the issue of going carbon neutral in other words our um, uh, recommendations before now have been that we cut emission at the source and it starts immediately but net zero as acquired by the industry it's all about pushing, you know, that uh, cutting down on emissions further down the road. Uh, you have a lot of countries talking about the year 2050. And our own country, Nigeria, went there to, our president was there to announce that Nigeria will start uh, cutting down on emissions uh, that in a zero issue from the year 2060. So it doesn't impose any real responsibility on these countries on what is happening right now. The climate impacts have been felt readily.